Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Taylor Jones. And do you have any idea what time it is? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. And for those that's wondering what I'm doing right now, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to give you a brand new episode of Cold Man's Winter. But unfortunately, it's not an ordinary Cold Man's Winter episode because since you know that it's February, it means one thing, and that's Black History. But before we get started... I want to say this because I got to get this out the way. Now, for a while, I'm referring to the betrayal topic. Now, the part three, part one, two, and three, I made a story about, about an individual who is actually a real life, real life person, Willie Pringle, that his real name, and for a while I felt guilty because... It took a father figure to let me know that it's it's wrong. Because you know, when it comes to telling a fictional story, you've got to remember to keep real folks' names out your mouth. Like, you got to come up with fake names to uh, identify the real people. And for that, I, I just totally forgot that it's against the law. And also, as a Christian... If you're telling a fictional story and put real people in it, it's kind of like you lying. You're telling a lie, and it's just over the top. And I never, never thought I, I never thought I'd be the first to say this, but it really, it really irks me. It really is a bad move. So from now on, you gotta, gotta think before you do some stupid, cause. Next thing you know, if you tell a story about a real-life person, it leads to lawsuits and issues to the fact that you don't even know who you are anymore. And it really, it really gets out of hand for me to think about it. And like you saw in the uh, intro for the intro theme song, you know, the hello, ladies and gentlemen, I made a disclaimer because... It's kind of like what you see in South Park or at the ending of a movie, like the credits are about to finish and you see, for instance, MPAA, well, MPA now is no longer Motion Picture Association of America. It's just Motion Picture Association. It's all overseas. Followed by the picture is made under the jurisdiction of IATSEIA, copyright 2023, hmm. Uh, YouTube Films Inc. All rights reserved, and but there's one thing that I keep forgetting because I don't watch movies as much, especially when you see warnings like this based on the First Amendment thing, when it says um, this I mean, the characters and the events and locations were fictitious. Are fictitious. Any, I mean, any real names or events are incidental or I mean, unintentional and or purely in, I mean, coincidental. So it's kind of like, like, I'm not a fan of wake up calls, but. With all that being said, I gotta learn how to uh, how to think think smart. It's kind of like I got got Will Smith screaming, and Eddie Murphy. You already remember the uh, M the uh, Academy or the Golden Globes when Eddie Murphy supported Will Smith when he said, "There's a rule, there's a blueprint, and I've been following my whole life." And forgive the sound because it's raining and thunderstorms. So stay safe at this particular time.
because you never know when a thunderstorm is going to be really, really violent and or tornadoes, especially when you're in Tennessee. So be aware of that. But back to Eddie Murphy, he said this, pay your taxes, mind your business and keep Will Smith's wife's name out your stupid mouth. And on that note, this is not the first time I got into some YouTube controversy because I went because I didn't think because two two seasons ago I let it I let it rip I went off on on my mother even though I didn't call her name but a diss is a diss and it's still wrong so I'm not going to go back and do the same same things again as much as calling out real people and telling a fictional story, that's that's got to go. Unless you quoting quoting some real um some quotes from the actors and musicians. Like give give the stars credit, but if you want to give your family and friends credit, you're going to have to have to wait until like come up with a way to identify them, you know? With all that being said, to Willie, Olympia, and Willie's Angels, referring to Kiyosha, Janisha, Jasmine, and Ashley Kendall, followed by Missy Stewart, um, Beverly, or Beverly Stewart, Taylor Stewart, anyone that I called, called out in the story, even though they're real people, I want to apologize because... I guess I didn't know the true meaning of telling a fictional story when you, you're not supposed to put real people in it. And, and thanks to my dad for giving me a wake up call. I got to I got to keep this in mind for my future fictional stories I tell on Cold Man's Winter. So I wouldn't wouldn't feel guilty and act a fool towards my family because beef is not the answer. It's not the YouTube way, it's not the Christian way, and definitely not the black history way. With all that being said, I say that a lot, I'm repetitive, but I don't care. But what I do care about is the fact that it's black history, and I'm just going to break it down for you. So what is black history? In 2023, some of us forgot about black history. Some of us don't even pay attention to it. But most of the time, we focus on taking care of business. But we got to remember our roots. I mean, how, how are you going to live an ordinary month without knowing what black history is? If you don't understand who Martin Luther King was. From Martin Luther King to Barack Obama, to Kamala Harris being the first African American female vice president in the U.S. of A. Followed by a historical moment, which will be later added to the Black History thing, when LeBron James, NBA star, broke the record of the most points. By passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar broke Wilt Chamberlain's record. And also, in memory of Bill Russell, to be a first African-American greatest of all time before Jordan in the NBA, winning 11 out of 13 championships with the Boston Celtics from 56 to 1969. And Earl Lloyd, the first African-American to play NBA. It's like so many unsung heroes. Even when it came to musicians, that's what unsung was on, all about on TV One. Unsung. Unparalleled. Un, un, um, phaseable. Even when you do 
movies like unsung hollywood and you have gary anthony williams who is the narrator well known for being mr no uncle ruckus from boondocks to have a strong narration for unsung i mean you think about donnie sampson from video soul you think about um AJ and Free for 106 and Park, BET Top 10 Live. You think about Rap City. You think about, um, man, real life TV hosts, TV personalities like Oprah Winfrey, to Jay Hood, to Sherry Shepard, Tyra Banks. No, I mean, it's just crazy like that. And even when it came to individuals who is multi, who are multi-talented, like Most Deaf or Yasin Bay, he can act, he can rap, sing, play. Wayne Brady, the same way. But what there's also a negative side of living a black culture, especially when we deal with cancel culture and all all haters everywhere but it's kind of like you have to be Dave Chappelle unfazable like I don't give a dang LeBron James he got booed while watching the Super Bowl he didn't give a dang he just rocked his shades with his wife by his side like man I don't phase me I've been dealing with this every day even if you make it a meme but for a meme like that, I would have to say, Sug Life. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding. But for real. There is a bad side for black history. One example. When Escape was out on like doing a tour thing or at the awards, whatever came first. They were a quartet, Latasha, Tamika, Tiny, and Candy. And a janky promoter had the nerve to disrespect Latasha's husband, Rocky Bivens, who was once a manager for Escape during the Off the Hook era. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like Escape is unbalanced when it came to a feud, a beef, a beef rekindled between Candy and Latasha. Well, as Britney Spears said, oops, I did it again. No, instead of Britney Spears, I'll be like Chuck D and say, here we go again. Now that's not black. To the janky promoter that put, that threatened Rocky Bivens as if he was as if Candy had something to do with this. Shame on you. That's not a black thing. But to Latasha Scott and Candy Burrs. Might as well. Have an understanding like you once sung. 30 years ago. Because. The janky promoter. He's trying to pee you off and separate y'all. Yo you better watch out for janky promoters. And that's why. Singer Kelly Price went off on one one janky promoter from Reup Nation. Now we all remember her her uh, rant at her hotel room from the fact that the janky promoter lied about Kelly and why she's not here, not performing on tour, to the fact that Kelly and told Life Jennings that something doesn't add up. There's a lot of things that doesn't add up. And African Americans. We are looked upon as fools. Well I'd rather be a fool. Than a dead one. I'd rather be a fool. Than to be locked up. To be somebody's property. To be. Laughed upon by the devil. We've been oppressed for too long, brothers and sisters. 
But some people in other races, they decide to give give our culture a go because black history was meant to stay. Even when the so-called Black Lives Matter started to come out, some people were against it because they figured that it doesn't make sense. But what does make sense is that black history is created. If it wasn't for Carter G. Woodson in the early 20th century to come up with this idea, which it became official in the 1970s, we would have been talking about King X, Douglas, Wells, Robinson, Marshall, to legends in the 80s like Michael Jackson, The Temptations, Motown history, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, followed by BET being created in the 80s. To having unrecognized talent. What's black history without Don Cornelius? The mastermind of Soul Train. What's black history without the, ori the original Black Wall? The black Wall Street. When black people didn't, didn't even have beef with each other. And they made businesses. They had banks. They did it all until one day the oppression was so deep, racism was so deep that the whole Black Wall Street was burned down to a crisp. Why would we have to deal with this? Because of jealousy. And based on a Facebook video that I watched earlier from my cousin Dolly Greer. She made a point that some of us, we are self-loathing. Do we have self-meditation? Do we have self-agitation, self-progress, or self-punishment? Like, it's back and forth. And I've been on a negative path for years. Too much weight lifted on my back. Too much pain on my shoulders. I want to want to lose all all that weight and get the pain out of my system. But how can that happen? It takes more than meets the eye. It takes more than sleeping. Good nights rest 7 to 8 hours or maybe 9, but 8 is the average number. Who would have thought that we lost a lot of legends? We lost a lot of legends in the rap game. African Americans the first rapper to die was Scott LaRock. And the murder was unsolved. Because that's not a black thing. I mean, people don't understand how to how to step up and find the killer responsible. It takes years. It takes a lot of complications to be overlooked. To the fact that God has to be involved. Because God watches our every movement. And I still can't get Take Six off my mind ever since they made the song called He Never Sleeps, He Never Slumbers. He, they also were responsible for their iconic song that they did 35 years ago. And to honor their 35th anniversary of Do We Do Wop Bop, well, Take Six, self-titled album. I don't know why I thought of Do We Do Wop Bop. I see it on the album cover. But that's not the al album title. They do harm. They do harmonies to the fact that they can, they can sing in a jazz tune, but they mostly gospel singers, a cappella. My favorite song from them was "Come Unto Me." I mean, they were actually the first individuals. To make it big in acapella gospel. To go platinum 
for their first album. I mean, they want, they were telling us to spread love. Spread love instead of spreading lies. The truth needs no disguise. I often say that love can open any door, but I wish we had much more. More love is what we need. We think of musicians like them. We think of uh, Marian Anderson, a female opera singer. We think of Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald. We think of the mighty clouds of joy, Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers, until Sam Cooke went to soul music. And one of the songs from the Soul Stirrers I can think of is Looking Back, because all African Americans need to look back. Looking back through all, all of my, all of our lives, we have seen where we have caused sin and strife. But I know, no, we all know that we will never make the same mistake again. Those words are powerful, but we don't believe that. Not of, not all our gospel fans. Not all our R and B fans. Not all are rap fans. We are all caught up in a society that music can too be an enemy. Whatever happened to rolling with the punches and going with the flow? I mean, we had so much talent. Who would have thought that kids could get involved in the music business? Like Frankie Lyman and his brother. He had a group on, on his own. I mean, whoever thought that black people could make it big through criticism, through race, through color, to the fact that we don't belong and we still don't belong now, but instead it's based on our own brothers and sisters is treating us like dirt. Where's the love? I don't know. Where's the truth? I don't know. Black Eyed Peas asked those questions. Mary J. Blige talked about real love. Common had a reference of that. Because how, as Common would say, how beautiful love can be on the streets. Love is hard to see. We gotta reach that frequency. Loving you is loving me. I mean, really. What is love? If we don't have love for black history. What is it? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. I mean, Marvin Gaye sang, God is love. Who would have thought that Marvin Gaye would do a gospel song in his journey as a Motown artist? Sometimes you got to sing, sing where your heart is. And, and earlier I, I apologized to, to the Pringles family. And Olympia was one person that, I, that came in mind. I felt so guilty to the fact that I don't even know the true meaning of patience. To the fact that I don't even consider myself black. But I gotta fix that. Self-guilt, self-hate, that's not a black thing. That's a wimp thing, a simp thing. Is that why a lot of men and women, black folks, are single? They don't have enough time to get off their tails and search. Make their dreams come true. That is what CeeLo, Big Gip, Andre 3000, and Outkast told us back in 94. You need to get up, get out, and get something. Outkast and Goody Mob. They ain't playing. Who would have thought that we would take over the rap game with situations like that? From get up, get out, get something by Goody Mob and Outcast to This is America by Childish Gambino. And yes, 
We've been caught up. I've been caught up in my social media, my cell phone, my laptop, as if we were on drugs. But that's exactly a picture that Childish Gambino was painting. A, a shirtless Childish Gambino posing as Jim Crow, pulling the gun on a man with a bag on his head. Earlier, the man had played a guitar. But when the beat changed after the gunshot, the background is full of violence, of riots. We dealt with a lot of riots. There's a lot of riots since Malcolm X's assassination. I don't know if it influenced the Watts riots of 1965, 66, and I, but I think that's the case. But the black man got killed by other black men. That is not the way black history is supposed to be. We're supposed to stand together, hand in hand. But since COVID came in, we have to uh, bump, bump knuckles, or do the elbow thing, or like we can still hold hold each other hand in hand, like escorts. Like I shall not be moved. I shall not be replaced. I shall not be taken away from my brothers and sisters, hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like I did for my first videos when I did covers in the beginning of Black History Month. Like Paris said, this ain't the, it ain't the same as the days of old. I mean, a lot of riots have been taking place. South Central Los Angeles riots of 1992 after four police officers were not guilty. Beating up the late Rodney King. But somebody filmed it on camera. But now the camera has been considered a target. Because a lot of people saying that the cameras, they're no longer helpful. People can film random things, but they're not going to do anything to stop the violence. We've been heading for self-destruction. Not to realize we are all in the same gang. From Stop the Violence movement to the West Coast Rap All-Stars. Everybody doesn't know exactly how to move on. But Tupac would say it best. You better keep your head up. Do what you gotta do. And with you, I am reborn. For all fans of Tupac, this is serious business. To all fans of Biggie Smalls, this is serious business. All you got to do is accept the fact that you're living an everyday struggle. But instead of telling somebody else to give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the loot. Be like Biggie and tell your story like Juicy. You dang right I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive and it's all good. And if you don't know, now you know. A change is going to come. Yes, it will come. When we put the guns down. When we stop smoking blunts. Drop the 40 ounces. Throw it away. Like. Stop. Stop calling women out their names. Stop lying. Stop hiding from the truth. Stop letting the murder go go unsolved, you know? Because imagine what it'd be like if if I saw a murder. I would do anything to put the cr criminal behind bars. But I can't do this alone. I gotta have a partner, a posse, a crew to catch the, catch the murderer. One way to catch the murderer, you take a picture of, of them with the weapon. You take a picture of their getaway car. Let's say the getaway car that I saw was a 1984 Grand Marquis from Mercury. And, I, and let's just say that I went to the police station and or tell the police what went down. I showed the pictures. And they're going to do the rest. And let's just say that I got rewarded for 
for being like a tipster. As WBBJ would say, be a tipster. You, if you see what's going on in the neighborhood or be a crime stopper. Let's put the morons in jail. Shout out to Lieutenant Mike Johnson. But I can recommend what went down. I mean, Good Times, The Jefferson, Sanford and Son, some of the episodes, the TV shows from the from the old days, they had some messages. The Cosby Show, they had some messages about how to survive and how to be a true family and learn your mistakes. You got to stop arguing with each other. You got to learn how to let that go. You got to learn how to be a black man, a black woman. With your head held high, even when the skies are gray, even when people say the N word and insult you. Bullies everywhere. You got to walk off. And if they want to put their hands on you, mm, let's just say that the neighborhood stand by your side. Because that's the way black history is supposed to be. Black history means to stand along with one individual. All blacks unite. Black fists raising the air. Some will rock leather jackets. Others rock froes. Others rock berets. Others rock sunglasses. And it's all black. But it's not just all black that the attire. Others can wear red. Red, black, green. Red, yellow, green for some. But it's always red, black, and green according to the X clan. As the late Professor X once said, like multiple times, Van Glorious, this is protected by the red, the black, and the green at the crossroad with the key, sissy. It takes more than X Clan, it takes more than Brand Nubian, it takes more than King's Son, it takes more than the poor righteous teachers. Wait, did I say that? It takes more than Public Enemy. Takes more than NWA to to defend all to, to defend to defend all black folks who got peed off and beat up and killed by the police officers that didn't mean hill of beans. And Ice Cube said it best when he was on his own when he said to serve, protect, and break a nickel's neck. But some some black folks that turn out to be police officers. I can't forget about them. I would never diss them. But I do know that cops need to be responsible. They need to be loved, especially when they're black. Referring to Dominique Moore, Hakeem Hart, Chastity Strayhorn, Ladarius Conley. Need I say more? What about the firefighters? What about the nurses? What about, what about family? Camille Gray, Laidler, a teacher. Charles Taylor, grandfather, a minister, a bus driver, once a substitute teacher. My mom, Vicki Taylor Jones, an advisor, former advisor from colleges. She paved the way from Parkland to Jackson State Community College to, to being a substitute teacher for Milan Elementary or Middle. What about, what about Willie Pringle, an Army veteran? What about me, a YouTuber? A graduate from the University of Memphis. What about... Man. A lot of black folks, and I just keep thinking. How are you going to shine, shine your light if you ain't going to have the guts? How are you going to shine the light if you don't know how 
how successful you're going to become. I mean, we black folks got to stick together and realize that this is not meant to be played with. No games. It's real life. YOLO. Swag. You only live once. Swag. Swag got nothing to do with this, but God does. We have a God to serve. We all have a God to serve. Whether you're down with Farrakhan, whether you're down with um, Tupac, whether you're down with Ja Morant, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, the late Kobe Bryant, whether you're down with Walter Payton, Michael Strahan, Emmett Smith, O.J. Simpson back when he was playing NFL in his prime. Before he did the crime. And followed by Deion Sanders. Prime time. Chad Ochocinco Johnson. Whether you down with um, legendary comedians like Dick Gregory. Richard Pryor. Dave Chappelle. Chris Tucker. Eddie Murphy, Eddie Griffin, whether you down with Wesley Snipes, whether you down with um, another good actor that is black, Jamie Foxx, whether you down with Makai Pfeiffer, known for playing a hood type guy, whether you down with Omar Epps. Morris Chestnut and all of them, whether you down with Shamar Moore, whether you down with the ladies need to have recognition too, whether you down with her, Gabrielle Wilson, aka her, who became the real live, real live version of Belle from Beauty and the Beast without sunglasses. Her eyes are seen by many. A beautiful Beautiful African-American doll with a splash of Filipino pride in her. She's loved by many, heard by many, but avoided by few, but she kept going. Are you down with the scissor? Are you down with um, the stallion? Are you down with Glorilla? Are you down with Vanessa Williams? Are you down with Venus and Serena? Are you down with um, Jasmine Sullivan? Beyonce, of course. Mary J. Blige. Are you down with Queen Latifah? Are you down with the UNITY Queen Latifah, that is? Are you down with MC Light? Are you down with Kiki Palmer, are you down with all the greatest, even the ones that have been looked upon and unheard of? Like boys to men. We, although we've come to the end of the road, I'm going to say this. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping for no man. Even if they dared pull the trigger. Even when we have to wear handcuffs. Even if our freedom is taken away. Being black is a real deal. And in the words of Alfonso Ribeiro from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. When he was called a sellout. I remember I quoted this two seasons ago. In, in my episode, Regrets. I was driving around and I was filming, but I kept my eyes on the road because you can't text and drive. You can't make a video and drive. You got to keep your eyes on the road. You got to keep moving forward. Follow the yellow brick road. And one day you're going to walk the streets of gold with God. 
We black men and black women have to understand this is a fight for our lives. But Carlton said this. You think I'm a sellout? Why? Is it because of how I dress and where I live? Or is it because I like Barry Manilow? A lot of people, they laugh at you. They think you're not 100% black enough. Well, if that's the case, you got to shut the haters up and do what you got to do to survive. I am jumping the same hurdle. Wait a minute. Being black is not what I'm trying to be because that's who I am. I'm running the same hurdle. and Running the same race and jumping the same hurdles as you. So why are you tripping me up? You said that black men are supposed to stick together. But you don't know what that means. So if you ask me, you're the real sellout. And later on, after coming home from a frat party and leaving the frats, after being called a sellout by the pledge leader, the pledge leader had it coming. Will Smith said this, We'll make like a tree and leave when it was meant to be. Was it meant to be said, make like a banana and split. And like I said on West Van Hook, my rap song under my Uncle Bean alias. I remember saying this. Jesus Christ, can you hear me? For I am stuck because the devil's filling my heart with bad luck. Never made a good song for the longest time. And I fell off the same bandwagon every time. What the heck is going on? I want to know. I am Uncle Bean, but I can't live the life of Joe. He has his own story to tell, and I got mine. That's why I'm keeping it real in the whole nine. Speaking of nine, rapper nine, nine double M formerly, but he just went with nine later on. I know exactly what I want. What you want, nine? Fat beats for my rhymes. What you want, nine? Mad cream all the time. What you want, nine? An ill posse and my name up in lights. N-I-N-E. That's why I'm keeping it real in the whole nine. Speaking of nine, I know exactly what I want, but how can I get it if I continue to front? Am I blunted on reality? No, I'm not, because the Fuji's already did it. Two Haitian Americans and one African American female. A perfect combination from Haiti to America to make a sound. The first album, they were like revolutionary, but in the second sound, they switched up their style. And their style was so impressive that the second album was more recognizable. Because at a time, people didn't want to hear what's revolution, like the real deal. All they hear is hustle, hustle, hustle on a daily basis. We've been repetitive, don't get me wrong. And we brothers and sisters killed each other over dumb things. Like flashing money. Everybody's so self-centered. That's not the black way. Look at what happened to Nipsey. Look at what happened to Triple X Tentacion. And it goes on forever. And But not only that, Bloods and Crips. Until 1992 when the LA riots took place. South Central Los Angeles riots. They decided to put their, put their hatred aside. And they got got along. The blue blue team wears red. The red team wears blue. Bandanas tied up together. Peace. That's all we need. Unity. But then it all then all of a sudden it picked back up. But some of the Bloods and Crips, after that happened, according to an African American man named Ronnie Ron, who was the mastermind and probably a co-founder of Dangerous Records in 1993. He put, put the Bloods and Crips, two opposite teams together, to get their frustration out with, with banging on wax. Banging on wax, number one. Certified gold hit singles, Banging on Wax, Pyru Love, which actually blew up for the album, and Steady Dippin'. But unfortunately, 
throughout the downfall that went down based on the Bloods and Crip members who actually parted ways and were never heard from again, ended up locked up and or dead. The show must go on. Banging on Wax 2, the saga continues. The, the album was less successful, but it still still got some good tunes. G's and Lokes and I Wish You Were Here. When Bloods and Crips were going at it. Like they dissing each other, but they're all on the same album. Bloods and Crips united, but they're only dissing each other. Because it's better than killing each other. Like I said, the frustrations were let out. But then all of a sudden, Bloods and Crips, after banging on Wax 2, they moved on and they made two albums on their own. The Bloods, Damu Riders, The Crips, Nationwide Rip Riders. Both albums were released in 95. I mean, they charted, but the second albums that they did, like a sequel from the 1995 album in 1998 or 99... Less successful. But. Due to the fact that. Ronnie Ron passed away in 1990. In 2003. Ron, Ronnie Phillips. God rest his soul. He actually got. Got the right to be. Um, a legend. He should be added in the. History of black history. For putting two. Two rival gangs together. To make an album or make a rap collaboration that caused a lot of p people to think that Bloods and Crips could get along ever since the Treaty of 92. So Ronnie Phillips, he should be added. Say his name. Remember Latasha Harlins? Shot by a Korean drug, I mean, Korean store store clerk during the LA riots hardships they come and go but black people we need to stick together and keep our heads held high we got to stop acting like a fool we want something we have to work for it we got to earn it instead of rob the rich and give to the poor and even when it comes to committing 211s 187s like I rather do I rather do a go to school or go to work type routine instead of hustling to the fact that I'm getting busted by the police and shooting my way up. No. Cuz one false move it's either casket or a jail cell and or a stretcher which leads to your deathbed but you survive you're just going to be paralyzed to the fact that people go and turn their backs on you because you are not 100 percent black enough to see where you went wrong where did we go wrong that's on us to figure it out so remember black history is not meant to be played with just like Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with. Who else should be recognized for black history? Even when they're like unsung heroes. Garrett Morgan invented the traffic lights. As well as the gas mask. We had an African American woman well known for creating the flavors of Kentucky Fried Chicken before her ideas were stolen by Colonel Sanders. A lot of controversy, but a lot of truth behind what is yet to come. Next thing you know, when we all pass away, we might as well be part of black history. I mean, we've been fighting for so long. Like Muhammad Ali 
and Joe Frazier. And but as for George Foreman, he fought, but he made a name of himself as a entrepreneur. Invest. You know what I'm saying? Invest in what you ought to do. Make your family proud. Make your ancestors proud. Make your icons see where you where you're going. Even if your icons included Emmett Till and Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, I mean ordinary kids killed. But the murderers have to pay the price. But then again, we should focus on bringing light instead of being put in the dark. Just like that song, I'm your nephew, yes it's true, can you hear me Uncle Sam? Which, the link will be in the description bar down below. My recent video I, when I sung a song for Black History. Because... Based on how my mom and dad and everybody else that I know considered me to to lay low sometimes, I have to do them a favor. Tough love. I was not a fan of that. Wake up calls? Never understood it yet. But dang it, this is 2023 and I got this short of a life to live. So I can't mess this up. I can't fool around. Because if I did, I would have ended up dead by a gunshot. Public Enemy said this. It takes a nation of millions to hold hold us back. Well, it's going to take a nation of billions to shut me up. Because I'm not shutting up about black history. My skin matters. Based on what I'm up against. I've been in too many wars and I lost. And because I let self-esteem, my low self-esteem get the best of me. Will you fix it or will you still act like a punk? I'd rather, rather step up like a man. Like a woman is about to step up like a woman. You don't need to rock a horseshoe septum nose ring or metal boogers. You don't need a tattoo. You don't need a get, a gun. You don't need bandanas. You ain't in a gang. You don't need to be mad all the time. But what you need to do is realize that every day is your last fight. Because you never know when you're going to die. You never know if you're going to live to see another day. As John Witherspoon said on Friday, God rest his soul. This is what makes you a man. When I was growing up, this is all the protection we needed. You win some, you lose some. But you live. You live to fight another day. I'd rather win than to be a loser for the rest of my life. And that's why I'm going to continue to keep this going. Because black history is meant to stay. Not meant to be peed on. Or buried because if somebody takes takes black history away from me then it's war but the mastermind responsible for getting rid of black history they're gonna have it have another thing coming not not comeuppance but revenge is not the answer to everyday problems because vengeance is the Lord not the black man. Even when YouTubers, black YouTubers, have to deal with dislikes. If you gotta deal with a dislike, it's kinda like to the people it's kinda like in your mindset, you be like, to all you people that dislike my like my stuff on YouTube, eat a worm and die. No. But for me, in a clean way of saying this. Shame on you. You think you know YouTube? You don't know a thing. You don't know hill of beans. But in a society where we can't be opinionated over each other, all because we're dealing with cancel culture, 
in which I say, to heck with that. Let that ride, man. Let that ride, like, meh. Get in your car, drive away, like, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. I'd rather be a proud black man. Riding along with a proud black woman who keeps her eyes on the prize. And God is the prize. Back to my cousin Olympia. I made a couple couple props of songs that she covered. Mostly gospel covers. A Baby Changes Everything, It Went Platinum. She received the she received the prop of a platinum record that I made. All you gotta do is go to Walmart, grab yourself a, a the biggest the biggest fo photo thing like a photo frame. Go to Lowe's, grab you some circular saws, the round saws that look like vinyls. Buy some paint too to paint over the circle of vinyls. The paper part, paint it white. The outside, like the whole thing over the paper, make sure you paint, paint it like, well, not just paint, you can spray it. Gold spray, platinum spray. Wait till it dries up. Get some glue. But first, you gotta. Gotta un uh, unsettle the the frame, un unadjust it mostly in the back. Turn the paper which has like a little design. Like make turn it over till you see the white 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 background. Glow I me mean, glue it up. Let the glue dry and make sure that the glue is actually um strong enough. To hold anything. Because tape ain't going to do it for you. Come up with. Pieces of paper. Like color paper. And even tell the truth. It's a prop. Olympia went gold. We went gold with. Well, along with Alden for. Their duet of mindless love. Back in 2018. But they were both certified gold in 2020. Because of me. And I'm doing this in the holiday season. 2021. Olympia went platinum for A Baby Changes Everything. My cousin Alden Hall, on the other hand, he went platinum for his cover of Luther Vandross' is So Amazing and I've Been Waiting. And it was a prop. If I can be a prop, Meister, I could put my family on the map. So the heck with me being fictitious. Fictitious. On this episode. Because I'm talking about black history. My family is black history. Whether you like it or not. I got to put them on. That's one reason why. My dad was concerned. A couple days ago. Because there's some things about the law. I just don't know yet. Well now I do. And instead of me dissing my family. I got to respect their wishes. And that's one reason why a lot of black folks have been down on their luck. So they don't understand how to be quiet and, and accept things. See, tough love is a double crosser. Well, if that was the case, then how come suicide has been the answer? A bad answer, by the way. So screw suicide. Let's put, put our emotions to rest like... Jasmine Sullivan told us to pick up your feelings. But now others would say, get up off your feelings. Because my feelings ain't nothing but a D thing, baby. And the D stands for dumb. See it to believe it for the best is yet to come. But anyway, but last year, based on my cousin Olympia's, uh, Hard work and singing gospel covers. Incredible God, incredible praise, and word of God speak. Combined together. A platinum prop, a prop of a platinum record. 
Olympia went platinum. But her third gospel cover, This Blood, I gave it to somebody special. Olympia went platinum for that song, but it was honored to my Aunt Beverly. Aunt Beverly is part of my black history. She's platinum. Why would the why would Aunt Beverly go platinum for my cousin Olympia's third gospel cover, This Blood? Because that's Olympia's mama. And I and I rewarded her a platinum plaque, a prop of a platinum plaque, not just because because it's a it could be a good present for Christmas, but also because of how she had a strong, faithful family support with love and support. And for my cousin Missy, Missy Stewart, shout out to her as well. I admit, it wouldn't be fair, it wouldn't be very fair to see Olympia get a prop of a platinum record. She got a couple of them at the house. Um, Beverly got one, she's platinum, but what about Missy? I did something for her, and she went gold. A prop of her singing a gospel cover of silver and gold. And she went gold. Missy Stewart went gold. So did Dolly Greer. I ain't forgot about Dolly. She went gold for her Facebook series that she makes called Lavi's Lifestyle Lessons. Although, Lavi's Lifestyle, Life Lessons. Although I had to... The glue, the I mean, I had to glue the so-called sticker, the parental advisory explicit lyric sticker, because vulgarity is still a problem when it comes to us black folks. We just get out of hand. We curse like sailors, but we can fix that through repentance. We can fix that with telling the Lord we're sorry, and we need to come up with a better mindset and stay away from the. Them folks that keep us down, even if it's from our own skin, because sometimes black folks cannot be your friends. They can be manipulative. Although we are one skin, we all have different lives. Imagine what it would be like if, if somebody had the nerve to, to listen to one of my rap songs. And decide to give me a prop or create a real, a real certification thing. You know, like your song has sold one million copies. I would be platinum. 500,000, I would be gold. But there's a catch. You got to stream. You got to download. You got to sell. But instead... It's not in the, not in the stores. I ain't got an album. But I got a list of songs on my own YouTube channel. Whether whether I'm singing, whether I'm rapping. If you like what you see, you're going to make me fool around and end up with a gold or platinum platinum play button from YouTube. But it got to be Around a hundred thousand or a million views, new of uh, subscribers. And it's gonna take me a long time. Cause guess what? I got a new one. 36 instead of 35. So I'm slowly growing, but I still gotta do more. Time. Time. I've been dissing Father Time a lot and claiming that he pimp slapping. He abuses me. Always slaps me in the face because I never gave a dang about taking care of business. The Dean from House Party 2 says this best. Time waits for no man. And I always say this. Time is never my friend. But the Rolling Stones, they said time is on my side. Yes, it is. Now, you always saying that you want to be free. So you come running back to me. But what does that got to do with black history? Exactly. But there's a catch to it. 
you can say things from people of different races instead of your own. But you got to understand different races, they learn, they learn much about our culture as well as just black folks. Because it's all one. All one. And for that, let's just say that one day. One of my rap songs that's on YouTube, i.e. West Van Hook Street, with the most views. Let's say that my family members, whether Dolly, Olympia, Missy, or I'm Beverly, they decided to come up with a prop. And they gave me a platinum record. Or gold. Either way. The way I made them was creative. And even if I had to use cardboard or pieces of colored paper to make the make the so-called hit single or album cover, I got to make it look real. Cuz Lord knows we all we all deserve to go platinum and gold. We all deserve an Oscar, a Grammy, an Emmy and a Tony. The EGOT and shout out to Viola Davis for being being another example of winning four gram four in a row four things in one. Barack Obama, now that's crazy. EGOT, the late Kobe Bryant won won an Oscar for Dear Basketball. Barack Obama. Common, John Legend, Oscars, Regina King, from 227 to the night on Bill Street, the, the streets, the Bill Street, she won an Oscar. And now we're just hoping and praying for Angela Bassett to get one. After all the hard work she did, but due to Wakanda Forever, Black Panther, she might as well get one. Will Smith had his, but he had to turn it back in and uh, serving a 10-year ban, but he still kept it going. Because guess what? Instead of being peed off on Chris Rock, and even if Chris Rock doesn't want to forgive him, he still got to make that money and do what he does. And that's acting. And that's why Bad Boys 4 is going to Going to help Will Smith overcome his hardships. I mean, how did Martin Lawrence feel about his partner in crime? Pimp slapping Chris Rock. And he's the same guy. Martin is the same guy that bounced from being pookie. Which led to Chris Rock. Because Martin, if I was him, I would be heart, heartbroken if I lost my mentor. Referring to comedian Robin Harris the same guy that said we don't we don't die we multiply and the same guy that brought you baby's kids and played kids father on house party one before he passed so what is black history how are you going to survive will you be remembered good or bad I want it to be good for all, all black folks. We may be underground, underrated, but we but being overrated is like we we doing this for clout, but the clout must must die down. The clout must must dry out like a drought. Cause no clout chasing. That's all we need to take a break from. Clout chasing. Take a break. And find a way to get everybody's attention one way or another. Because we are love. We are light. But not without God. And for us black folks, we are better than nothing. Even if we don't have enough money, we have to make sure that we keep it real. And that's the way it goes. And on that note... 
that wraps up my Black History Special, Black History Month 2023 Special, Cold Man's Winter. And like I said before, if you like what you see, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click on the notification bell and there will be more in stores. The link to my cover of Uncle Sam by Tevin Campbell and Prince, rest in purple, will be in the, be in the description bar down below. And like I said, once again, to the Pringles, I'm, I'm truly sorry for, for calling y'all your real names in a fictional story when it's against the law. But now I but since it's a lesson learned, I'm never doing that again. So I gotta think smart and be wise. At the same time, since it's Black History Month, I still gotta put you on. Willie, Olympia, and Willie's Angels. Da -da, da -da, da -da. And y'all know who y'all are. Because I called you earlier. But I'm still looking forward to Keeping y'all in a good mood. Because that's all we black folks need to do for each other. Brothers and sisters. Nubian kings and queens. Whatever you call an African American individual. Male and female. Because we, we got to make it, make it better for us. Not, not worse. And also... With all that being said, this episode, this special has been brought to you by none other than Sweet Lady of the Week, where a woman, especially an African-American woman, female, gets recognition, especially since it's Black History Month. So who will I give this one to? Oh, I already know who. One prime example of an African-American doing right and trying to keep her head above high water. Keep her head up high. Even when the skies are gray. Mrs. Shannon O'Maze from Jackson State Community College. And to Mrs. Shannon O'Maze, I never forgot about you. And with all that being said, stay tuned for more Cold Man's Winter Season 4. Because I got more in stores. So until then, thanks for watching. This is yours truly, Taylor Jones, signing out. And power to the people.